Good morning and welcome to our first stream of the Indie Arena Gamescom mix-up that will happen completely digitally this time. So you will see a lot of us streaming today and tomorrow. So welcome. Today we will have an exclusive look at El Ijo, a Wild West tale. Um, joining us today will be our developers, which we will introduce well, pretty much, I would say, right now. Right now. So let's switch over to our Discord. One moment. Hello, guys. Can Hello. you hear hey. us? I'm from Berlin. Ah, okay. So it is working. You should see those lovely people from Berlin. Yeah, so. Introduce yourselves, maybe. Let's start. Let's start simple. Ladies first. Hi. <laughs> 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 hey, come on. Um, so, uh, good morning. Um, uh, uh, first of all, uh, we, before introducing, we say thank you for Handy Game or two Handy Games to do this with us. And also, no thank problem. you very much for the collaboration. Uh, it has been a wild ride. <laughs> but uh, I think, uh, yeah, I think it's all coming together and we're really happy. Um, yeah, my name is Maria Grau-Stenzel. I'm part of the Honey team. I'm uh, dealing with the team. I'm the creative producer and we, yeah, uh, yeah, now you go ahead. I don't know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was, that was a good start so yeah. far. Hello, yeah, uh, I'm Stefan. I'm the lead programmer on the game. Um, yeah, that's basically it. I, I deal with all the technical questions issues, ideas, and all the uh, creative input into a computer. So, yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. Definitely. Good morning also from my side. I'm Yanis. I'm, uh, I started Honey Studios together with Fede a few years ago. And uh, I work also obviously on Elifo being like the technical producer, like the connection between Stefan and the team and the technical side of stuff. Nice. So we got that ahead, but you know what we forgot? We forgot to introduce ourselves. To introduce <laughs> ourselves. So quick heads up. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jan. This is Felix. And yeah, we are the hosts, obviously, for this stream. Yep. Cool. Off to a great start. Nice. Okay, so Honig Studios. You're located in Berlin. How big is the studio in total? How many guys are you over there? Uh, we are uh, 12 people. All. Uh, on the LIFO uh, the last three, four years, I would say. Um, yeah, so we're all based here. Um, actually, one is in London. Ali is in London. One is in London. The rest of us are all here um, uh, in Berlin. I didn't even know that. That's interesting insight. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know. Well, <laughs> we could also learn something from yeah, this stream. I guess, it's yeah. okay. Cool. But uh, this is we have been all in different places within in Berlin, so it doesn't really matter if you're in London or if you're in Neukölln in Karlshorst, it, it doesn't well, matter. Well, the last month, same <laughs> Yes, definitely. I mean, sure, speaking about the last months, um, you were also definitely impacted by that, I would say. So um, you guys are probably also working from home, most of them, or have been working from home. I mean, right now we are kind of sliding into a back to normal kind of approach. But um, I guess it was also difficult for you, right? Yes. Yeah, it, I think it was a new way of um, uh, dealing with each other, with the project, how to communicate it was a special new thing for, I don't know, it sounds really bad. We never communicate, but now we did. <laughs> no, but it's a, it's a big thing to uh, talk to someone in person and explain the things then over the phone, over emails, and it sometimes can come to misunderstandings. And it is really good if you're there and you are talk in person, in flesh. Yes. And uh, I think that was the, or is the nicest thing now to come back to the office and see each other and uh, yeah, working together again. Yes, 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 definitely. This is also something that we can uh, definitely agree on. I yep. mean, um, of course, we also um, needed, had to, you know, restructure everything pretty quickly, but um, in the end, I must say, it's it's easier to just stand together behind one screen and talk about stuff than, you know, everyone is sitting on their screen and you're doing some screen sharing or whatever. Hey, we have some 
fans from uh, Brazil. No, speak English. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, John Mello. There will be some videos and pictures of, of Honix development process of the game soon so oh you know what we could also since we were talking about the team we can so these are the 12 people you talked about probably in your in your um, studio in berlin i guess yeah exactly pretty much the same background that we see uh, right now so we uh, definitely can say where it's located <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> so a question that comes to mind for me is, are you actually using, it looks like a chalkboard there. Are you using it for like game development, like discussing design ideas and approaches? Totally. Uh, the, we had the idea that at the end of a process or a workshop, it will look beautiful with wonderful concept art and concept art and we take pictures. But at the end of the day, it always looks ugly. Uh, and <laughs> <laughs> So we, yeah, this is actually, yeah, uh, discussing uh, Lipo stuff, but no one can understand it about us. <laughs> <laughs> it's the quick, no, scr it's it's quick scratches. It's, like it's an entire wall and we have another wall as well. So it is really good to quickly come together and maybe have a little drawing and you would say, hey, this was the idea, the setup yeah. and so forth. It's also something that's good to come back to from, from the home office time, right? So you can just gather yeah. some people and stand to the wall, draw some things, expo expose some ideas. It's actually a pretty fun concept, I think. It's pretty good to get that out there real quick, have it have it sketched, and then Definitely. put it in the game. The thing is, so funny is yep. we have all kids, uh, for most of us, uh, quite a few have kids, and then they come and use the chalk and then start <laughs> drawing within it, and then it was like, oh, what a marvelous idea! <laughs> <laughs> no, that's great. Nice, okay, so before we had over too much into deep development and production. Maybe let's talk about the game. I think that would also be a great idea. So what exactly is El Hijo? What is the story about the game? Okay, El Hijo <laughs> is a non-violent um, <laughs> non stealth game. Um, it is set in the Wild West and it deals about a little boy called El Hijo that was left behind in a monastery by his mother after um, their farm got burned down by really evil bandits. They have another choice but leave him there to protect him. But as you can imagine, uh, a little boy of six, uh, that is six years old, he has no, uh, he doesn't want to stay in a, in a monastery and be ed educated. He wants to leave, he wants to get out and he wants to get back to his mother. And Elijo is um, 30 levels of gameplay. You have the first 10 levels within the monastery, then afterwards he goes through the desert because he wants to go back to his mother, and then you have another 10 levels within the villain town. Yeah. I've seen the background, background with some, some Im images from in-game already. Mm -hmm. Kids could see him sneaking through a kitchen and through a big uh, labyrinth, pretty much, where he has to find his way through, solving a few puzzles, so looking pretty good this far, I think. Yeah, um, I mean, besides puzzles, there's also um, a lot of other features, I, I would suppose, uh, for Elijo. I mean, you know, talking about as I wouldn't know the game, but of course I know the game, so, but, you know, it's just... So what other features are there besides puzzling and stealth gameplay? What is really nice, we are trying to um, make a lot of connection between uh, like the story between the gameplay and the artwork and it is like a coming of age story um, that Elijo develops. So mm -hmm. it develops the game, it develops the music, everything is connected and um, thought of that you as a player want to evolve as well as this little boy at the beginning, you're more timid, you're hiding more, then later on you start to throw things, you find your slingshot and you find different toys that you can use to manipulate your opponents and sneak through the different levels. I think this is also important that you said manipulate the opponents because um, as mentioned earlier, it's a non-violent stealth game, so the emphasis is really on to, you know, get through all the levels without, you know, killing basically everyone. Mm -hmm. And um, was that something that was in your mind like from the get-go, that they were like, okay, no, we want to do a non-violent game, 
through all the killing and shooting and whatever there is already in the games, or is this something that evolved? It, no, it was not. It was a clear thing that was straight from the beginning. And I think that's also one of the parts why we said it's a little boy, because, um, I mean, yeah, imagine you're in a usual stealth game, you are um, an, a secret agent, or you have some uh, <laughs> yes. shoot people, and you um, have a knife, and you um, kill people, and we have, like, more this innocent character that is moving around through an environment that is really hostile. And that's um, what the idea was, that Rico needs to come out, uh, develop and find ways to sneak through through the environment. I think, Yanis, you watched originally the, the movie from Jodorowsky. And that's Topo. why it's called El Hijo, because the movie of Jodorowsky is called El Topo. Uh -huh. um, and El Topo starts with the father bringing his son into a monastery and saying, you're now a grown man, goodbye. And the whole movie is about the father. Um, mm. so the idea was, okay, let's tell the story of the boy. Ah, yeah. okay. That's also cool. Didn't know that. It's great. And, and I think the, the movie itself is quite violent. It's extra it's, it's violent. It's really, really... <laughs> 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 so, uh, so for us, it was to try to, uh, yeah, no, we don't want this. We want to focus on the stale thing sneaking around and um, yeah and I think it, it came out very well. Yeah. It's also throughout the games I think uh, you start in a monastery with the monks and later on you also get weapons and I still like the approach that you don't default to to violence or at some point you just get violent as well because for mm -hmm. me at least in every stealth game at some point I'm like why don't you just shoot <laughs> this guy to get past <laughs> and here you don't have the opportunity so you really have to think about how can I get around these guys without actually harming anybody? Like, where do I need to send them to? Or how do I need to influence them or manipulate them to get past? Which is a very nice concept, I have to say. Lovely. So, now, when we were talking about the monastery and, you know, how this game got together, I think this is also maybe a good point to talk about, like, the development. Because we mentioned, um, did we mention, I mean, yeah, that it was uh, starting uh, as a kid's game. So you started with this. Is this correct? Those are like yeah. Duplo Lego type uh, bricks, basically, yeah. where you would made your very first I concepts with. <laughs> Highly elaborated, like the images behind. <laughs> <laughs> No, um, we need to uh, think two things as well. Uh, it, we have a character that is a kid, but the game is um, not for small children. Eh? This mm -hmm. is something that always put together, and this is not true. Like the um, fact it is nonviolent, but you need a certain um, maturance or a certain mindset to in, in order to be able to solve the game, the, the puzzles. So I'm thinking it's, um, yeah, it's a bit, um, yeah, it's not for small children, uh, the, the game. And now that we show Duplo, eh, this is us. <laughs> well. <laughs> trying to, <laughs> trying to uh, um, get our mind around um, the actual gameplay. Like this was the first time we actually met in order to try to find out how could the puzzle work. This was before we actually wrote the first um, um, application to the Median board. We were, Alejo was funded by, by the Median board. And we had to give them an idea of what the gameplay is. And that's why we came together and we sat down and we, we yeah, we played with Duplo. <laughs> <laughs> and from that, it also grew a bit more serious from the Duplo, because here I can see that you, you know, gave the bricks, the real life bricks, uh, some, you know, virtual value basically they said okay this little triangle thingy here will be um, Elijo with one unity meter in um, distance what does that actually mean like one unity meter yeah. <laughs> 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 let's say i'm so, so so many years now into this it's pretty hard to explain this easy <laughs> well i'm sorry <laughs> you, you have a 3d world this 3D world, you have also some kind of measurement and 
in the real world, we use meters. So in Unity, we have also in this 3D world meters. So we're using these meters to estimate the, the distances and yeah. I think for <laughs> us, it's really important to, um, that we know with this, or like what you see here seems really simple, but Eliho is a certain height. Then the objects need to be a certain height so that you can hide behind. The monks yes. are a certain height that they mm -hmm. can see you from certain positions or not. The line of sight that the monk is having to see needs to be blocked out by certain objects. So you are constantly, this seems really simple, but for us, um, Eliho in the production chain, 20 centimeters. Like it's not a big, it was like a meter, <laughs> but then it was but then the act we had to adjust everything by like a little bit was in, insane. Like it, it was really something really important. That's why we That's put, right. it, put yeah. it in there. And yeah, yeah no, we had the, the size of the monastery, the doors, the monk, uh, the monks wouldn't be able to go through anymore because if you could change in size, the monks had to change in size. And it was just, yeah. It, <laughs> <laughs> Especially the proportion was an interesting thing um, when we started with where can you crouch, where are you visible, what are completely blocking, also visually from the camera perspective. So when you see mm -hmm. these isometric view that we have, what is a height that also the player from the isometric view estimates as it's high enough to, to cover. Um, and this was, yeah, especially these, these, these scale that you see, oh, the monks are much bigger than Eliho in the world. In this scale and the other NPCs too was oh. pretty pretty interesting to figure out, especially physically. Yeah. I think the other thing that you would never think is something uh, think 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 is um, <laughs> something uh, um, weird is shadow. Shadow is not equal shadow, and I think we can tell stories about how dark a shadow can be that you can see, how dark that you will be seen, and shadow <laughs> inside. Yeah, we we only have an hour, but otherwise we... <laughs> it's also something we can we can see later on and maybe pick up because we're gonna play a little bit later. Mm -hmm. Then then it's also something we can like show show the, the viewers in in the game then where the difficulty lies that you're just talking about because um, for us it's it's easy to see what, what you're talking about, but if you haven't seen the game before, um, yeah. it's not that easy to grasp this concept I think. So pick up later in the game then we can sort of come back to this this whole height and say sizing yeah I think it's it would a very be interesting topic yeah definitely so we also have some different concept art um, tell us about this little scene here is this one of the earlier concepts about like one of the bandit camps I, I would suppose yeah ex exactly um, do you want to I should, I... yeah um, the, our process was basically um, the level designers together with the artists were sitting for every level and were sketching it uh, on, on paper, like just the architecture, so that it works in terms of gameplay, of course, and it also works in terms of visual. And once this architecture was done, then the artist one um, was doing not the whole level because some levels are very vast, some are small, they're in confined mm -hmm. spaces, very fast. So this one is, is a big level actually, but he was creating snapshots of some of the moods, of the moments of that level to give the mood. Which um, would uh, look like something like this. Correct? Uh, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So that's um, basically the level. So yeah, this is actually from drawing to from the first layer was a sketch he did with with the level designers and then he started drawing on top of that basically yeah, so yeah. what we can see here is actually um, a few levels right so it's just a the whole context of a of a set of a few levels where you play exactly. each segment after each other so you will make your way through the cathedral or the, the church the monastery to the garden and then from there try to escape further into the vastness and the wilderness, like you said, further down. Yeah. All the levels are, um, we have actually a very vast map of all the levels starting from 
your room or you start level one going down the monastery so all of them are actually connected and then the desert and, and so on i think it's one of the last images that we will see it is it, it this was our guidance from the beginning pretty much mm -hmm. that we the map, yeah. the map that we wanted to make a, a connection you know, that it's not that you're there and suddenly you're there it sh should make okay. sense that he's the making map. this i don't know where sure i have the map I mean, we have something for the view cones, we have the mine cone. Yeah, this was also interesting technically. Eh? How much can they actually see the monks and how much do they roll? <laughs> yeah, that's something. Yeah, you can switch back to the field of yes. view. Yeah. This. It's probably, I imagine, like for now, it's, they have this, this classic side radius that they, that they see. Did you ever think about having them like reach around them like how much thought went into where can they reach you because you said about the sizing and for example do they notice if you're pressed against the wall next to them for example because that's also something that you probably have to think about because if i sneak past them on the other side of wall maybe they can't see me but they can they could like they would maybe notice so is that something that went much thought into that how you want to approach that um let, let's say um uh, we started first to make it pretty realistic, so each noise and each scatter and everything was pretty uh, harsh on the player to, 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 to be uh, that he's judged on. Um, and then we started to simplify it and using this, the basic rules. So saying, okay, we have the vision cone, it's pretty easy to, for the player to understand. So this area is a thing where the NPCs get attention and um, chasing him. And then he has a near body radius, we call it. Um, this is basically the area that you definitely get catch. So if you're too near an NPC, you definitely get caught on the puzzles. And then there's also sound, right? So monks do notice if you sprint past them, if you move objects near to them. So that's also yeah. something to keep in mind during the puzzles, because you can not just move objects out of the way in front of them, they will, or behind them, they will notice. They will hear that you're there and try to catch you. Yeah, and Eliho, when he runs or walks fast, he makes noise. Mm -hmm. So you also need to be really careful how you plan if you run through the level. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. I mean, should we maybe fire up the game now? I mean, we could. We can still talk about the game while we're playing the game, right? No, <laughs> this is out of the question. <laughs> I cannot <laughs> play. I need, to, I need to concentrate, but you guys can. You Definitely. Can. Okay, then uh, let me this scene over here. Yes, well, I set everything up. And you can set it up. Oh, now you wow. can just minimize that. <laughs> this is the scene we just saw drawn that you know, like for us, it was really important, as Yannis was saying, to have this close connection between the artist and the gameplay because it's, it's really. Sometimes the functionality or the gameplay works, but it looks shit. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's why um, it was really difficult to... One second, find. Maria, because now there's game sound over your lovely voice. We have to maybe toggle down. Head into game right now. Okay, then head over. Um, can you switch down the music maybe a little bit? I need to go back there. <laughs> like this probably? Yeah, I think this is okay. Right. Okay, now... Let's the game. Um, Maria, Janis and Stefan, you're still with us, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, 
Well, maybe one second. Maybe we uh, we also start. Um, yeah, we switch back. Sorry. <laughs> um, screen share not mine. <laughs> screen share. Yes. Oh yeah. Sorry. Now we are back, so you should hear some lovely music in the background right now and we will have a look at the game now. So, um, first things first, what you're going to see here is still very, very and highly work in progress. So you will see bugs, this is, you know, this is gonna happen. You will also see maybe graphics or animations that are not final yet. Um, so just a quick heads up, nevertheless, um, we are very happy that we can show you, well, the recent build and yeah, we will start pretty simple um, with level 1 actually, although there is a level 0, we will skip that and use level 1, right? Yes, I would say so. Level 0 is like a little prologue and something, but something you can explore yourselves then it's out. Exactly. Do you want to watch the intro? We could watch the intro. Yeah, let's watch the intro, come on. I mean, it's a, it's a beautiful cutscene. Also something that we didn't talk about yet, it's the 2D drawn cutscenes, which are pretty beautiful, if you ask me. Yeah. Like, very well drawn. They tell the story in a very emotional way. They do. You know, we, we are really, really happy. This was a collaboration between um, Juan and Jade and, they, and Yaro. And they did a really beautiful job with the animation and it really sets the mood right. Yes. It was also quite hard to, to tell the story without using any uh, dialogue. dialogue. Dialogue and voice, yeah. It's definitely an interesting thing that, you, that we are not having any uh, uh, dialogue in the game, but communicating everything of visuals and animations. Um, to make it accessible for everyone, so that we don't have a barrier of uh, speech. We have text and localization for sure, but also for many languages. How many languages we have? Fifteen. A lot. Uh, young. <laughs> we have a lot. Yeah. I think it's right. We have a lot yeah. of localization. For, we're getting it uh, available, but yeah, it was, was was also interesting to see uh, to get everything uh, without using uh, hardly voiceovers and stuff like that. Yeah, for us it was really important, the visual aspect, and it's a visual storytelling. And of course, quite often um, people say, but how can you make sure that everyone knows what is going on? And um, yes, it, it is possible. I think you don't need to get everything. Maybe if you play it a second time, you will find smaller details or different things like <laughs> in any game go and explore and you find out. And I think the key element that the boy wants to get out, he wants to find his mother, is really um, the, the basic thing you need to know. And everything else is building up, making it more rich for you. It makes it more beautiful the more you um, stay in the level and explore. Yeah, yeah that's true. And that's, that's really good that it's so accessible. So we, yeah, we don't have to do a lot of translations. And on, on the other hand, we, basically are doing that, but for a lot of languages then. So we can make this game accessible to pretty much everyone. This is great. Now, let's talk about light and shadow. This is because I think this is something that we can show now pretty well. <laughs> yep. So you can see the, 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 just to show you what we see here is um, the view cones that we talked about, the vision radius, and here you can see very well um, how you should use the shadows to hide from the monks, right? Yeah, initially the idea was to have um, dark shadows everywhere that you can hide in, but then we uh, we are in the desert. You can't <laughs> have shadows that dark outside, and we tried it. Huh? We had it um, set up, oh, let's see how dark can we do the shadow outside. But to have a dark shadow like this is, was impossible, 
And that's why we then said, okay, when you're outside, it's rather more where you hide, but um, but about shadows. So it it had to change. Yeah. To so, so basically, two different rules yeah. inside of rooms or in the darkness when you're at light, for example, um, you can hide in the shadows. Um, and if you're outside, you're using um, obstacles to crouch uh, and to hide inside. So the two different tactics, basically. And they are mixing up in later levels, um, but yeah, this. Pretty much a difference uh, to make it possible to uh, have a stealth level in light areas. <laughs> yep. Yeah, next time, no desert for stealth. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Although we do have desert levels, right? But there's also they are done pretty nicely with a with a twist. So yep. will we reach them? Uh, not today, I think. No, we will mainly sneak through the monastery that we. Um, Discussed like that you could see mm -hmm. pretty much in the in, if you can see the uh, graphic concept that we saw with the um, labyrinth in front. Ah, and okay. the, 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 that's where yeah. we're starting at the moment. The time lapse, yeah. And okay. we're making our way down from the top of the monastery where his little room is, down towards the garden and labyrinth area, and what then we would go outside. What are the the blue things? What are they doing? These are checkpoints at the moment. Like this is a checkpoint, for example, where if I get caught. Um, is where I would start over again. Ah, okay. And now I need to run because I need to make it in here. Ooh. Ooh. Been practicing or dealing with the game? A little bit. <laughs> I've played this enough to know <laughs> if I can make something or not. If I can make the the time. One other interesting bit uh, with the bird view is uh, that you can also get hints of objects that you can interact with. So yes. you see height hiding spots, crouch spots, and so on. Yeah, for example, here you can see on the on the top screen, you can see another checkpoint and left to it, or right in front of me, pretty much. There is the curtain, which is um, mm -hmm. has this little blue V on top of it. This indicates hiding spots or interaction spots where you can move objects or something like that, or crouch oh. to or hide in. But there's the vast majority of stuff you can do on these, on these sites. And coming back. The bird view, what Stefan was mentioned, is um, like a little companion that um, Elijo was given by his mother in the level zero that we didn't play. And he <laughs> is supposed to help him to find his way around, as Stefan was describing, with um, hideouts and enemies and so forth. Yep. That's something that just that can sh the player can just, if he doesn't know what to do, you can use the bird view to get an overview of the whole level. But as you said, later on they get pretty huge, so mm -hmm. it's um, you can get on a on a high point and kind of use the bird view to find your way around, find checkpoints that are also a little bit of a guidance where you should head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> as yeah. As yeah. always, if there's so a checkpoint, definitely it's helpful, probably good I would to get suppose, there. Yeah. <laughs> um, and this also helps to find children throughout your duration that you can talk with and inspire them to kind of follow what you do mm. and try to escape from the monastery, the monks. For example, yeah, this is our, our second storyline in, in the game. It is um, not the main key one, the one to find the mother, but Eliho evolves to a little hero of the ch children that are being used for work in, in um, our game. And um, yeah, and he's inspiring them, as Felix was saying, to uh, Hey, get out! Don't accept what you are supposed to do. Uh, be your own boss, and um, <laughs> I could have made it. <laughs> it's okay. Don't risk anything oh. and blame yourself. Oh, blame yourself? Make a fool out of yourself. Yeah. That's the right thing. And we have a first question out of chat. Hi, when can we see the demo? Unfortunately, we do not have a demo for El Ijo. I'm sorry. Um, we will see whether there might still come a demo or anything, but uh, for now uh, we don't have any. Um, nevertheless, what you can still do is head over to Steam and wishlist the game. So you get the news of the game up front and the, at the very first. The, yeah, the, yeah, and be, be the very first to get it, sorry. <laughs> also, while we're at it, you can ask questions in chat anytime now. While we're playing, the devs can answer your questions. They will also be in 
Discord later. I mm -hmm. was taken to answer your question. So if anything comes up, if you want to know anything, just hop over to Discord. Maybe you can. Do we have the link here? Yes, we do have the link. Ask the devs. Ask while we're streaming. If you have any questions, anything you want to know, anything, any insights you want to know, just fire away, and we will be happy to answering. Just to here in level three, what you just saw was that you are now able to throw. Like this, you were not. So it's one of the next steps in Nelijo's um, development. That at the beginning he was more sneaking and hiding inside, and now he is starting to throw. So he's actually, yeah, getting more like, uh, um, yeah, he is trying out more. You know, mm -hmm. like that you can now divert the attention of the different NPCs to uh, the the monks, the enemies. That um, yeah, you can lead them somehow. That you can pass to them. Yeah. Right. Use different tools to make your way through it. Manipulate, as we said before, the environment to, to find the best path to get past all of them. Indeed. Yeah, maybe we can, can have a small uh, moment in the aiming. So if sure. you're starting the aiming, that we can explain a bit the visual. Um, so you see these blue big radius, this is the impact radius of the stone. So we have different um, materials like stone, wood, or whatever, sand, for example. Uh, and this has different noise that it creates. So later levels, for example, sand is really taking the noise. So it's really small radius, pretty hard to distract people far away. But for example, in the first levels, the stone, you're, you're, it's, it's much easier to distract people. Um, the red circle around we come back to it. I just want to show yeah. how distracting works. <laughs> oh. Ooh, hoo, hoo. Not even close. There you go. There's your red circle again. So, yeah, the, the red circles basically are the um, area where if you intersect with the noise, um, that they will hear you. Yep. And, you can and also, when you're running into them in this red circle, you also get caught. Yep, you can like see. Yeah. You can see um, if once you you the radius intersect the noise radius and the fundament, they're gonna start blinking. So you will have a clear indication of that the monk is gonna hear what you're doing at the moment. Hmm. Right, Maria. Sorry, you want to say something? No, I just wanted to talk a bit more about the kits that you can collect them. Like in every, um, starting from level two, there are some kits that you can find. And this will also unlock um, artwork in the gallery that you, um, that you yeah, can have a look at if you like. It's like a little treat for the players that are going and exploring the levels. It's not a need for the story. It's not a need to complete the game, but it um, will enrich your, your gameplay because also if you collect all the kids, you will get something different at the end, at the very end of the game. And it's like trying to, yeah, <laughs> go and explore. I have also some, something about mm -hmm. that. Um, the interesting thing is if you're freeing these kids uh, through the whole story, you're also getting small stories. So for example, this one here where, where uh, she puts potatoes in the sack and gets uh, <laughs> Uh, a bit, let's say, uh, informed by Lijo to do not the thing that she needs to do, so being more free willing, be more a kid, be more <laughs> against against the, 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 the things that the authority, she authority, yeah, mix some stones in there. Um, yeah, so so it's it's pretty nice to, if you like. Uh, to Detail. watch these okay. detailed stories uh, and also find these kids later, like Maria said, um, and play with them again. Hmm. It also is, uh, isn't easy to get all the kids in like one playthrough, right? So especially in the later levels, um, you need to, uh, to basically know your way around the game already. So especially yeah. if you're maybe then playing for a second time, um, that might be a goal for you to achieve, to get all the kids and inspire them. Yeah, there's quite some detours you got to take to, to free some of them, but it's pretty much Elijo's mission, kind of, like, he wants to escape, but he also wants to help others mm. do the same, so there's a few detours you need to take to free all of them, but it's pretty much worth it because you get stuff. We don't call it detour, uh, we call it <laughs> that you explain. Because 
Well, come on, I took it. Ex exploration. <laughs> More explorations. <Sorry. laughs> yeah, there's different paths to pretty much most of the levels that you can take. <laughs> like, there's no, you need to go that way. Oh. Oh. I kind of want to go around. Felix, what's happening? Are you getting too confident? Huh? I noticed. <laughs> <laughs> nah. I just want to take <laughs> some different routes then. I'm sure you can play it already with your eyes closed. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would be interesting. <laughs> oh no. Ah. Uh, what? Ah. Yeah, that's what that was what you talked about. I made it into too much noise while running past that guy. And he noticed. <laughs> and it was pretty close that he almost caught me. <laughs> I saw it, yes. This is a light, nice little detail with the chili, putting chili into the soup to make it too Extra hot. Extra hot. Yep. <laughs> There's a few, a few quite fun stories right in there, I think. Little little interchanges between Elijo and the kids. There's a few fun things in there. So, Elijo is also a little rascal, kind of. Yes. <laughs> He's not only escaping, he's making the life harder. Ooh. We made it, and I also like it how like all the different gameplay elements get introduced level by level. So we know, so you were casually just hiding in the vase before. Now you can push some boxes, and all the different elements are coming together level by level. So I, it's uh, it's really good. I think there's a question. There is a question. Will there be an episode where you need to move through the shadows of moving people, not just through the shadows of standing objects? Mm. We, yeah, we, we have the bisons. Y yes, yeah. spoiler yeah. alert. So, <laughs> yeah, not, not necessarily <laughs> people. <laughs> people oh, might be the wrong right. word. <laughs> all good, all good. Yeah, not necessarily okay. people that you might be trailing or hide behind their shadows, but uh, there are a lot of different elements in the game besides like static shadows coming or getting created by the sun. So, yeah, definitely. The, and the, but the bison is uh, definitely one of that. We will not see that, but we saw, if I'm not mistaken, Maria, we saw the bison at Gamescom. Um, in sure. the, yeah, last yeah. year, right? I think I think I played through that level with you together, sitting on the couch in a live stream. <laughs> no, we were talking about it because it's um, like somehow related to I don't know. For me, it's like Ulysses, you know, the mm -hmm. guy that is in the, in the cave with the um, cyclops um, that he blinds, yeah, and then he's checking the tops of the sheep when Ulysses tries to get out of the cave, and yeah. so the idea was that um, Elijo is hiding inside the bison or behind it so you can actually below uh, below the bison you hang underneath the bison and the bison which is <laughs> from eight yeah put the hideout in technical <laughs> field <laughs> <laughs> uh, this was pretty nice to to make but yeah this is helpful for every viewer that is like to see that uh, i would say watch the video from the games from last year huh mm -hmm. <laughs> I think uh, we will also maybe show the the new bison maybe maybe later that year definitely. Yeah. So yeah. there will be a lot more Alicia coming up, guys. So don't worry. <laughs> we will keep you covered. This part I struggle with always. There's there's still a part in the game that you struggle with. Yes. Oh, mm. I think I I'm disappointed. Yes. How so many hours? <laughs> Three hundred. Seems about right. Oh, I made it. Oh. Nice. <laughs> smooth. Uh, that's <laughs> very smooth. Cool. I lost so track. In which level are we now? Um, this should be. Level six, the library. Yeah, the library. Level oh, six. One of the uh, six. most interesting concepts uh, that were made and it's, it's really interesting how all the ways that you can go through this level are ending up. So it's, there's not only one way to, to, to solve this level, there's uh, multiple ways. Yeah, to go through. there's a lot of freedom to it, right? So you can kind of choose your path and yeah, make your life easy or maybe take a harder route. But in any case, um, 
you can find your own ways through the game. Yeah, this level especially is like there's a lot of ways through this level. Any any speed run strats already that you guys worked out? Mm, so the perfect really path. <laughs> I mean, I could try to take the perfect path through this level, but it's kind of hard. <laughs> okay, so then like don't. <laughs> not, the, not the fastest thing to speed run. Mm. Especially for level six, it's pretty interesting. We we thought about. Uh, a few achievements for the game, and mm -hmm. um, we, we we thought about the puzzles and how how it could be interesting to add an, another challenge for players uh, with these achievements to play the game. So watch out for that. It's pretty pretty interesting. Uh, let's say yeah, challenges to to play the game to achieve um, the achievements. What would be one? Uh, what would be one uh, achievement? Maybe you you can spoil that. We allowed. For example, can we spoil? <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, for example, don't use stones in a specific level. Oh, okay. No, yeah. that's yeah, definitely or... challenging then, because the the stones are your main way of you know trying to um, distract the monks, right? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Or, or shoot out all lights. Or something in one yeah. level that you know, you know, that's... Oh, that was a can you can you go back maybe? Yes. Oh, it looks so great. Just sometimes yeah, we just have to stand there and enjoy the scenery. I mean, it's so, so cool having this little <sighs> What's the how would you call it? The solar oh, the, uh, diorama solar system. thingy. Solar system. solar system going around. Mm -hmm. oh, it's yeah, it's good. <laughs> Okay. And it's, it's basically the, the, the fun fact is that the all the rotations are based on the real thing. So it's, it's definitely fast and up, but the, the relation between the planet and the movement is on the... On the ah, the okay. So the real thing, basically. <laughs> but, but if we would use real time, it would be so boring, but... <laughs> <it's still enough. laughs> but this was a detail that we put it in that, that we all have, have the same on the right. Uh, oh. right, and then the game is full of all those little details. Details. Yeah. Um, I played a I played a lot, and I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we <You> need <laughs> always more stuff for you to discover. Oh oh, that's one. No, but I think that is one of the things that keeps us still going. You know, like uh, if you work with something like this for four years, it's like uh, sometimes you think, oh, this is. You had enough, eh? but here is so much variety, so much uh, love is well put in that, hey, the music, um, the ca character is reflected in the music. You hear the monks, you can see now, this was Stefan was saying, it is so much uh, like little detail in it that you, even now, we are still like full of passion uh, with it. Mm -hmm. eh? Like we have fun doing it. And we feel sometimes sorry for Felix, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. Not well, you got you, you got you got to showcase the chase somehow, right? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you would still be able to make it. Yeah. If there was a little bit a bit bigger shadow in front of the base where they lost sight of me, I might have made it. But uh, not maybe, this time. Uh, can you see me back here? Oh, oh, oh. Yay. Nice try. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, but uh, don't feel sorry for Felix, so it's no. his job. <laughs> yeah, it's fine, it's fun. He can handle it. Don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> How much time do we have left? Like 10 minutes? Yeah, around 10 minutes. Any, any more questions? So this? far, there's there's not a lot of uh, questions coming in, so I would say we can just uh, use it to uh, play a little bit more. It's all good. Oh, that's ah. a shadow. Don't worry. <laughs> Don't worry about me. With the bones. Ah, and there is now the oh yeah, the huge organ. And ah, the window, I like yes, that. with the colored glass. Yeah, 
have. No, we, we can definitely see that um, there's a lot of um, artistic um, effort going into it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but basically, this was one of the most complex ones to make because uh, you have this huge organ um, where the, the, the NPC is playing at the bottom, so it's now quite loud up there. And while you go down, um, the music changes and the perception of the player changes um, with the music. Mm -hmm. And there are NPCs that... We could, we could showcase that even. We could just have to tune up the volume a little bit, Felix. Yeah, but I need to... I cannot do it in-game. Ah, okay. I need well, to fix the game. Then we don't do it. Maybe that's the environmental thing is also, I think, better, it's better experience when you're in the game is desired. Mm -hmm. It's because there are some NPCs that have notes above their head and they cannot hear. So this is also a part of the gameplay where okay. they want to make the, the piano at the bottom, the organ at the bottom. So you can't distract him or any other who are whistling maybe. Um, uh, you can't distract them by noise. So if you throw stones at them, they will not be distracted. Hmm. Yep, a new Jacob different solution <laughs> <laughs> for those guys. That's they will be to show you. This guy is oh. not gonna. He doesn't care. He's playing the organ. He's going ahead in his element. He, he's in his element, definitely. But okay. there will be different tools. This is also an interesting bit that while you're evolving as a uh, in the story, as a as a Lico and also as a player itself, uh, with all the abilities, uh, you're getting new ways to distract or manipulate the people um, to solve the puzzles. So this is a pretty, pretty interesting. For example, for these uh, monks that cannot hear you, for example, uh, or other NPCs with different abilities. I think it will become clear in the next level. Once you get out, then you see the next toy you get. Oh, and yeah. This toy ah, yeah. Oh. You will be able to then distract the people that can't hear. So everyone, they are whistling, they are not paying attention. Eh? You're singing, you're not hearing. And how do you distract them? And then with the next toy, you will see how you do that. Will we make it? Yes. Okay. Of course, Felix is on fire. Maximum here. focus now. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. Maybe a question in between. What was the hardest? What was the hardest thing to develop in the game? What was the biggest, the biggest difficulty you had? I, I think it is diff different for everyone working on the on the project. <laughs> like, for for me, it was um, quite difficult to um, find compromises, you know, between the as I said the artist, the game player, and the story, but mm. also from the individual. Like uh, imagine you your artist brings the most beautiful artwork or the most greatest music. And then you say, oh, this is fantastic, but it doesn't fit the game. <laughs> you know, that is, that is really difficult. Eh? It's really something you need to communicate a lot. And with this communication, it's really difficult um, or it's really important in our team to be flexible, to listen, because then we say, okay, why is this puzzle so fantastic, but it's looking not nice, you know, then mm -hmm. we need to discuss it. And this is really how we work, we work that we talk about the stuff and say, no, this is not good. This doesn't help us. It helps us to say it is not good because of this. And mm -hmm. then the people can fix it, you know, and it's their creative freedom to how they fix it is they are the experts. We can point out or I can point out, or Yanis points out, this is not good here. It doesn't mm -hmm. make sense. And then the people will go back, the artists, musicians, everything to yeah, get the best result. Yeah, that's uh, that's that's a uh, that's the thing, right? So especially the creative people, they they are so in their element. They're putting so much effort and so much detail onto everything. But um, sometimes you can't just use it. I mean, we also um, have that all the time, right? When you're like developing a new model and it has, uh, I don't know, hundred thousand vertices, and you're like, yeah, performance, <laughs> uh, please. 
and uh, then the art just has to, to rework the stuff or you have a lot of effects going on because you're, I don't know, you... Uh, oh no, Felix! Exited the wrong way. <laughs> well, so close, go through the maze again. Yep. Um, yeah, so you start the game, you're putting a lot of effort into effects, uh, particle effects or whatever, and at the end, when everything is coming to together, you realize, oh, wait, this, this is too much. We have particle effects everywhere. It's, everything is blinking. We, we cannot use that. So that's definitely a good point that you made. So finding a compromise in there between artistic detail or like whole passion and like real stuff that you can make. So that it, that it still runs well or um, doesn't cause any other issues. But also the level of quality, you know, like if a model is not looking good or a Lijo, you don't know how many times it was redone. He was, <laughs> I think, level one more than 50 times, you know, it was just not good enough, not good, not mm -hmm. being, we're not happy with it. And, and this is what we are really grateful then here that Honig allows us to have this freedom eh, to say, okay, we go back. And we, I think we had different um, tools we used to build the levels. I think we had up to level 15, everything built. But then we said, oh, we are not getting any further with these tools we've got. But there's a new tool that just came out. With this one, we can look into cracks in the floor. We can look into different things. And it's not killing the performance. It's actually working better. <laughs> and then they said, let's start all over again. You know, mm. and that was really... We that's that's the thing, yeah. Development Short, evolves. All right. The end, I think also, it's I, will, I wanted to make it to the guy on the right to showcase the how you can um, manipulate guys you can't hear with a toy. Basically. Ah, and yeah. why we're at it? Well, we, because we're talking about art. Did you actually experiment with different art styles? Like, as kind of a last question, or is it did you straight away knew you wanted to go with this art style for Elijo? And no, we knew straight away. It's actually one of the first things we did uh, was story and art. Um, uh, and then, I mean, apart from the Duplo, of course, actually, that was the first thing we did. Um, but yeah, art was one of the very first things we did. Um, we we'll just have, I mean, most of us are very visual thinkers so it uh, really helps to to know where where this is going um so yeah art didn't actually change okay um, i think the the, the top. Had a lot of challenges and that was a great thing for a programmer like uh, for me when working with people it's important to be flexible you know like not to okay this is one structure and this is how we stick um, Stefan did uh, amazing things to say, okay, um, this is how the gameplay is evolving, this is how we work, let's see how we can make this happen. Eh? And this is like something that is really important for us to see what works best for the project and not then saying, sorry, but this is not happening, now it doesn't work like this. We say, if it's possible, we make it happen, you know, and that's really um, something that is uh, um, fantastic, I think, from the from the entire team that everyone is open to discuss and to and mm -hmm. to the And there's also one thing that I want to mention about difficulties in production. Um, from the technical side, it's definitely performance and shaders on the different platforms. So figuring <laughs> out which platform uh, has which variables, how do they interpret that and stuff like that. We, we have the, the luxury that we have a multi-platform engine, but there's mm -hmm. still adjustments that we have to do uh, specific to um, make it run as smooth and as nice as possible. Yeah, no, definitely. This is also one of the challenges. And in the background, uh, Felix and I were just quitting the game and switching up to you. Love again yeah, we could see how the toy soldier works if you can direct them into a certain certain path because they want to investigate what is what's running around in front of them and that's one way to manipulate for example the guys who can't hear yeah. anything just something i wanted to show the use of a different toy and yeah. things. definitely all right guys 
we made it. That's like one hour. That flew just like past us. Thank you for being there with us. It was great talking to you and having in-depth insights about the development of El Ijo, a Wild West tale. Um, so yeah, guys, for all the others that are still watching, you can wishlist this game right now on Steam. And you can also head over to the Indie Arena booth online and walk over through our booths and check out all the other different games that we still have in store for you. Up, up next, we will have Townsman VR. So yeah, stay tuned and um, have fun with the rest of the Steam. Uh, rest of the Steam, rest of the stream. Yeah, one uh, letter <laughs> makes a big difference. So thanks again, Janis, Stefan and Maria. So yeah, you guys will now be available in Discord and um, if there are any other questions that you have um, for the developers, head over to Discord and just, you know, shoot out your question. That's basically it. Now I switch over here and yeah, I will say goodbye. Anything else to add? Thank you for watching. It was fun. It was also Bye. also learned stuff, so. See you. Bye bye. Bye. bye.